Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Break Talos Principle 2, the only series where we break puzzles not because they are easy, but because they are hard. So today we are going to be doing South 2, the Verdant Canyon, I believe it's called. And this isn't our true first introduction to the grav panels like I said in the last episode, because uh, we did interact with them in the mega structure. Um, but it is kind of our first real introduction to them, including the grav shifter tool. And like most things in the game, these grav panels are pretty broken if you know how to break them. So uh, let's just go ahead and jump into puzzle number one and check them out. So the first way that they are broken is that when you jump off of them, you can really control your momentum in very interesting and useful ways. So for example, if I jump off, I can actually land way up onto that pillar up there. I'm doing something like that. And if I actually did land on it, um, yeah, like that. Uh, so yeah. Ultimately useless for solving this puzzle, but it does kind of show off one of the many ways you can exploit these. So let's just go ahead and jump into here and get onto the ceiling. It's always uh, very disorienting when we're on the ceiling like this, because I just get thrown off and can never remember which way to go. So once we're up here, we're just going to get up here and jump over to this wall up here. And we can jump onto this pointy bit, up onto this higher wall, up over to this roof to this higher rooftop, onto this pillar, and from here we can solve the puzzle. Now before we leave, we're going to have to do a little bit of setup for puzzle number two. So I'm just going to take this grav shifter here and free the connector. And then repeating the same trick that we just did um, again, we're going to bring this up to the ceiling here, and we're going to jump up onto the roof one more time. Now, there's a few different connectors over here that we can connect to, as you can see, and I need to make sure I do the right one, which I believe is that one right there, the furthest right one. And we're also going to connect to this connector there, or this uh, laser source. We're going to leave it right there, and then we'll be using this just a little bit later. And last but not least, we're going to take the grav shifter out with us, and we're going to use that momentum trick to jump off and through that hole in the wall right there. All right, there we go. Just took a few attempts that time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and bring this over to number three. All right, and like I said, we're going to leave two for later, so we're just going to go through here and we're going to do the Western Lost Puzzle while we're in the area. So another way that grav panels are broken is that sometimes you can put the beams in such a way that they leave the puzzle. And we can use that to our advantage either by bringing items in from outside the puzzle or just by jumping in ourselves, and that's what we'll be doing in this case. And by writing it into the puzzle, we will get to a spot that we are normally not supposed to be able to get to, which is this panel right here. And then from here, it's uh, just a simple matter of jumping over and getting into the final room. Alright, and with this one done, our next spot is puzzle number three again, so let's run back there. Alright, so if we take this graph shifter and we point it right at this wall, right about there should do it. We can go in and then we'll use the graph shifter that's already in the puzzle here to get ourselves up to the other one. That'll bring us right over the ending there and put us on this panel, which again, we're not supposed to be able to get here at all. So we're just going to do our little jump trick again and oop, without hitting the beam, without leaving the puzzle and without over jumping it, we're just going to land right inside. All right, and then we're just going to grab this grab shifter and bring it with us to puzzle number four. All right, I really like this puzzle, just like on a conceptual level, the way it's uh, laid out on the wall like this. So let's just go ahead and put this beam right there, intersecting that uh, barrier. And we're going to open this first barrier with the laser. And once again, using our little jumping trick, which uh, we're using quite a bit in this area, 
I've noticed. We're just going to jump right into the beam, which lets us get through this uh, barrier here. And we can solve the puzzle. We are going to need to... No, oh, let go of me. We are going to need to bring the box out of here for puzzle number two. So we're just going to grab it, pull it off the wall. We're going to come back up here. And we're going to jump off onto this wall down here. Uh, let's try that again. Okay. And from there, we can just jump out of the puzzle, and we're going to leave it right here in front of the entrance so we don't lose it. And we're going to bring our grav shifter onto number five. So this one is probably my favorite solution here. Um, I stumbled on it completely by accident when I was just playing around with the puzzle. Uh, I thought I had come up with a solution for it, and then while playing around with the puzzle, this just randomly happened to me, and I'm really glad because it is very cool. So all we need to do is have the uh, grav beam up in the very top of this wall here, and then we want to put this pretty close to the wall right there. And then we're going to jump onto that surface so that our head intersects with the box. And we're going to try to bring the box with us. And if we jump off... Nope, it popped us out in the wrong spot. Let's try, like, right here. Okay, nope, that one, the box was too close. Alright, let's try it, like, right there. If we get in the right spot, it just glitches us right through the uh, wall into the area behind it. And here's a little sneak peek at our very first Easter egg. Um, I will come back to it later, just so they're all at the end of the episode, but yeah. So then once we're on the inside here, we can just jump on the back side of this uh, gravity panel. And we're going to come all the way to the top there. And there's one tiny little spot that you can look at that lets you jump to the top of the roof. And that's right there. So let's just uh, drop this out of the puzzle there for later. And run over here to solve the puzzle. Ooh, oh, okay. That was very close. I almost fell into there and uh, soft locked myself. All right, so we're done with this grav shifter, so we can leave it right there, and uh, we're going to go on to number six next. So similarly to number five, uh, I stumbled upon this bug slash solution by accident. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is drill a hole in there and pop the grav shifter through. So tools in this game like to snap to each other. Uh, for example, the grav shifter beam and the driller hole uh, like to align themselves so that the beam can go through the hole easily. And there's one little problem with that, and that is the uh, driller is more interested in staying aligned with the grav beam than it is with staying within the bounds of the wall and, you know, like obeying physics. Uh, so if we put it right there, we see this really weird effect where uh, the hole leaves the bounds of the wall. And we're going to use that to our advantage. And normally it says you can't take a driller through its own hole, which makes sense. Um, but they didn't really think about this, so we're just going to grab it and... Ah, crap. Okay. So it's kind of a crapshoot whether it puts you on one side of the wall or the other. So we're just going to try that one more time. Alright, so let's see if we can get it this time. And uh, we're just using the fact that we can walk all the way through this hole um, to be able to grab the driller here. Normally we can't walk through the hole and we wouldn't be able to grab this driller. So if I grab it and kind of move to the side at the same time, I should be able to get it through. Yeah, there we go. And simple as that, number six is solved. And then while we're over here, we're going to get the Eastern Lost Puzzle next. And this one's going to be kind of a more boring solve. Every area has one or two puzzles that there isn't really anything interesting I can figure out uh, what to do with them. So this one, like a couple of the others before, we're just going to do a weird jump off of this. Land up on top, and then we're just going to run around. But it is technically cheesed, and that's really the most important thing. 
It's kind of a fun little jumping puzzle. Ooh. Okay, that's not good. That's really not good. Um, all right, I'm going to go reset and I'm going to come back here. Um, yeah, give me a minute. All right, let's try that one more time. Just going to do a little bit of a jumping puzzle along the wall to get to the end. Let go of me. Okay. Nope. Jump too far. Okay. Let's try that one more time. Okay, there we go. Unfortunately, since I did have to reset, that means we have to get a couple more boxes uh, again, but really that just adds like another minute, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, so with this one done, we're going to go on to number eight, I believe, next. Nope, number seven next, this way. All right, and then one more way in which uh, graph panels are broken. Let me just go ahead and grab a connector here real quick. Um, so in this case, normally if you're standing on this uh, box right here, you cannot jump onto that grav panel. They are smart enough to like block that. Uh, however, it does let you jump onto the side of the box for whatever reason. So we're just going to exploit that and get over here onto this pillar. Can I connect to this without jumping off? Come on, I'm so close. No, oh, okay, whatever. Let's get back up here. Oop. I really don't need to sprint jump there. Uh, this is so disorienting. I hope it's not too bad to watch. Okay, and we're just going to connect that to that and leave it right here. And there's another one solved. And we will be using this box as well. So let me just go up here, grab it, and do our little jumping trick to get back out. There we go. With jumps like these, uh, 1K really should be a skateboarder. So we're just going to leave this box right outside of number 8 here and solve it real quick. Alright, and the f final way that we'll be showing off how uh, grav shifters and such are broken is uh, they apply sort of an anti-gravity effect uh, even when you just jump through them which can help us out in certain cases. So like this, uh, we want to jump over to that platform right there, but we can't make it if we just jump off of this um, because we get too much downward momentum towards the ground and we just land short of it. Uh, but if we jump through the beam, the beam kind of like levitates us for a second and it gives us a little bit of extra distance that we can use to get in. Just like that. Which makes me think... It'd be really cool if there was like a an anti-gravity skateboarding game where you can like skateboard off of multiple different surfaces like that. I think that'd be really fun. All right, so we're uh, just going to go ahead and get our boxes to number two, and I will meet you there in a couple minutes once I get them all over there. Alright, 
Um, so I really didn't technically need these boxes to break number two. Uh, but I have this kind of rule that I've been following where I try to avoid solutions that are too similar to the intended solution for a puzzle. And uh, if I were to get this connector out in the normal way by using the gravity shifter and getting it up there, uh, really all I would have to do to solve the puzzle normally is just connect it there and there and leave it, uh, rather than jumping it out and just connecting it in a different way. Uh, so I decided to opt into bringing some of the cubes here instead so I can get them out of here uh, with an alternate solution, if that makes sense. Uh, that way my solution and the intended solution are pretty far removed from each other. So I'm just going to grab that there and bring it over here. Now unfortunately since I did reset I am going to have to go back to number one and connect that laser again. Let me just move this back a bit. There we go. So let me just uh, run back to number one and reset that laser real quick. Alright, and here we go. You may have seen during that uh, little fast-forwarded segment there that I accidentally connected to the wrong connector there at first. So I had to go back and change it. Um, but with this one solved, that is all ten puzzles done. So let's go ahead and do the sparks next. So our first spark is going to be back behind puzzle number one. So let's run back over there real quick. And yoink. And our next one is up on the other side of this little uh, mountain up here, where those panels are. And it should be right, not this way, up here, right around the corner. Yep, there it is. And let's go ahead and do our Easter eggs next. So our first one is actually right across the canyon. It's right there behind these pile of rocks. So let's just jump down here. And we'll just go into photo mode. That should be close enough. Yep. And right here we will see our first Easter egg. A Mars rover. I don't know which one specifically this is modeled after. Uh, I don't know if it's like modeled after Curiosity or what. But I'll probably put a picture of it up uh, just for comparison here. All right, and our next Easter egg is going to be way over on the other side of the map, so uh, it's a bit of a run, and I'll meet you over there. All right, so it's going to be right up there in that little outcropping of rocks, so uh, we're going to once again need to use photo mode, so let's just get close enough. That should be good. And once we make our way all the way up here, we will find the kitty face. Bet you didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Alright, with that one out of the way, our next easter egg is up here behind the Stratton hologram. So let's just climb up there real quick. I'm trying to jump up in such a way that I don't activate the hologram. There we go. Because I really don't want him talking over me. So right around here, we will watch our next Easter egg. There is no strife, no prejudice, no national conflict in outer space as yet. Its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. And its opportunity for peaceful cooperation may never come again. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, 
fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. And that was, of course, John F. Kennedy's 1962 speech about putting a man on the moon. And uh, I kind of like how that parallels what I'm doing with this video series. Like you said, we do it because it's hard. Is this the easiest way to beat the game again, to get my final achievements? Uh, absolutely not. This has taken like 200 hours of my life so far. But I do it this way because it's a challenge and because it's really fun. So yeah, um, let's go ahead and get our next Easter egg over here. I think I ran past it. Yep, here it is. So if we hit E on this little bottle right here, uh, interestingly this is one of the only easter eggs that has an animation attached to it. Uh, we'll get a picture of two of the really big hands, I think, in one of the upcoming areas being constructed. Uh, and that is the same image that was on the shells uh, in the last episode. I don't know where else that image is f used or where it's from, but uh, maybe we'll see it again later. Alright, so our next easter egg is in puzzle number 5. And this one of course is the one that we just saw a little bit ago, um, with the graffiti on the inside of the walls here. And without the box there, I'm not able to glitch myself into it, so I'm just going to have to look down from below, or down from above. But if you really want to see it again, you can just uh, go back in the episode. We'll just zoom in, and there it is. Oop, there we go. Alright. Next Easter egg is on the other side of number seven. Um, so this... Eh, uh, I'll explain it when I get there. Alright, so right on the other side of number seven. Uh, this one is marked as an Easter egg in TJM's Easter egg guide. It's called, like, Frog Migration or something. I don't really think this is an easter egg. Uh, there's a whole bunch of the spawners in the game that act like this, where they just kind of endlessly spawn frogs. And I think for whatever reason they just put more uh, spawners than usual in a tight grouping here. So I don't really think this is an easter egg personally, but who knows, maybe it is. And our final easter egg is over on the other side of the lost puzzle over here. And we have a lost hologram of some cats. I never used to be a cat person, I was always more into dogs. Uh, but as I've matured, I've realized that I think I would really like a cat. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just allergic to them, so that's not really uh, feasible. But it would be nice. So anyway, with all the Easter eggs done, all of the sparks done, and all of the puzzles done, that just leaves the tower left, so let's just run ahead uh, and go do that real quick. Alright, so I'm going a little off script here, um, because I noticed uh, a while back that it is possible to skip the first Tetromino Bridge there. And I just want to know what happens if you do skip it and you only solve four of them. So we can get up right here on this little cliff face. And then do a little bit of parkouring up here. right over here. So we skipped the first bridge, and then we'll just construct the second bridge real quick. And this one is probably the most challenging one. If not in the whole game, then at least uh, up to now. Let me just try to remember how to do this one real quick without making a fool of myself. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So technically, I think you can get up to here uh, using only four puzzles solved. solve. 
Huh, that was really weird. It teleported me back to the entrance, I guess, because I didn't do the first bridge. Weird. I didn't think she'd even. Alright, so as we enter our next area here, um, South 3, the Circular Oasis, I just want to thank you for watching this part of the series so far. If you guys have anything to say, any feedback, anything like that, just leave a comment. I do love reading them. Uh, I don't remember if it introduces any new puzzle elements in this area. Um, I guess we'll find out next episode. Uh, so join us as we tackle South 3. Peace. Uh, but if you put it right here and jump on it and then go into photo mode and then cancel, it'll kind of launch you in really interesting ways, and that's not the way I wanted it to go. There we go. Um, this may be the first time in history that somebody's actually solved this puzzle using the left laser. I really hope that's true, because that would be awesome.